exams and seeks God's grace in their next levels of life and academics. Agnes Nampera thanks God for the gift of life and her family. She prays for her marriage, children, husband, friends, relatives, and blessings in her job. Together with all our intentions, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Today we celebrate the memorial of St. Teresa, Benedicta of the Cross. She was a Polish, born in Poland, but to a Jewish family. We are told that in her youthfulness, she enjoyed philosophy and she had an academic career. However, she had quite a number of challenges in her life. Besides being a woman, she was at the front of the Nazi persecution of the Jews. It's one of the things that she suffered during her time. But what is so special is that she converted to Christianity and she became a religious. She was inspired by St. Teresa of Avila. We pray that she may continue to intercede for each one of us and that each day of our lives we may live to see the graces of God flowing to us even amidst uh, our own crosses. Let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred. As blessed Mary of the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on each one of us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. And let us pray. God of our fathers, who brought the martyr, St. Teresa Benedicta of the Cross, to know your crucified Son and to imitate him even until death, grant through her intercession that the whole human race may acknowledge Christ as its Savior and through him come to behold you for eternity, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses spoke to the people saying, And now Israel, what does the Lord your God require of you but to fear the Lord your God, to walk in all his ways, to love him, to serve the Lord your God with all and chose their descendants after them, you, you above all peoples, as at this day. Circumcise therefore the foreskin of your heart, and be no longer stubborn. For the Lord your God is God of gods and Lord of lords, the great, the mighty, and the terrible God 
who is not partial and takes no bribe. He executes justice for the fatherless and the widow and loves the sojourner, giving him food and clothing. Love the sojourner, therefore, for you were sojourners in the land of Egypt. You shall fear the Lord your God. You shall serve him and cling to him, and by his name you shall swear. He is your praise. He is your God, who has done for you these great and terrible things which your eyes have seen. Your fathers went down to Egypt, 70 persons, and now the Lord your God has made you as the stars of heaven. He sends out his word to, uh, to the earth and swiftly runs his command. O Jerusalem, glorify the Lord. He reveals his word to Jacob, to Israel, his decrees and judgments. He has not dealt thus with other nations, he has not taught them his judgments. O oh, Jerusalem, glorify the Lord. Alleluia. 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 God has called us through the gospel to obtain the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Alleluia. raised the sons are free from tribute the Lord be with you and with your spirit. a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew you, Lord. at that time as the disciples were gathering in Galilee Jesus said to them be raised on the third day and they were greatly distressed when they came to Capernaum the collectors of the half shekel tax went up to Peter and said, does not, does not your teacher pay the tax? He said, yes. And when he came home, Jesus spoke to him first saying, what do you think, Simon? From whom do kings of the earth take toll or tribute? From their sons or from others and when he said from others Jesus said to him then the sons are free however not to give offense to them go to the sea and cast a hook and take the first fish that comes up and when you open its mouth you will find a shekel take that and give it to them for me and for yourself. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. It is so humbling to read the, the Gospel reading today and look at the relationship between Jesus and Peter. We are given the story of Jesus and Peter and the temple tax. I want us to believe that this story focuses on the close relationship between Jesus and Peter. We know that Peter is the only disciple who speaks during the discourse, uh, the Passion Discourse, moving nearer to Jerusalem. When Jesus is moving nearer to his death, it seems true that only Peter is the only disciple who seems to be at the front of, of things in his speech. Peter and Jesus are so close that a single coin pays for both of them. A single coin pays for both of them. 
So humbling is the question posed to Peter. What do you think, Simon? For whom do kings of the earth take toll or tribute? From their sons or from others? And when he said from others, Jesus said to him, Then the sons are free. However, not to give offense to them. That is so humbling. However, not to give offense to them. Go to the sea, cast a hook, and take the first fish that comes up. And when you open its mouth, you'll find a shekel. A shekel is equivalent, a half shekel was equivalent to two drachmas. Take that and give it to them for me and for yourself. Do they take the tax from their sons or from others? And the answer was from others. And the sons are free. There is so much lesson for me and for you to draw from that question posed to Simon. And all of us get entangled into it at different moments, situations in life, circumstances that pop up when we least expect them. But it's so good to know that they collect these tax from others and not uh, from their sons. And yet, even with that, Jesus goes ahead to pay. To pay. It is so humbling uh, to, to, to hear the wisdom behind Jesus uh, in this gospel reading. In the first reading, we are to live as God's very own people. We are to live as God's people. God possesses us. God possesses us. And when he possesses us, it's true that we live to obey the law. I was reflecting on the laws. We have so many laws and we have to be obedient to them and we have to follow them. There are so many laws. There are so many laws everywhere, almost in everything, almost in everything. I'm looking at all spheres of life. We are guided by laws. When you become a priest or religious or you, you, you end up in marriage or you live as single, or you're a member of a community, or you live in a country, or you become a leader, a member of parliament, or give it a name, when you become a Christian, it seems there's no place to hide from laws, whether them be human laws or divine. There is no place to hide. But I want us to remember this, that what so much obscures us is not obedience to the law, but it's the reasons as to why we must be obedient to the law. We know that laws are simply signs of God's love and our reference for him, and our reverence to Him in thanksgiving, our adoration to God. Now, all laws invite us to adore God. If they are good laws, they invite us to love more, to give God His reverence, and also to live in adoration. For example, the first reading reminds us that God absolutely created the whole world. So we are called to love his creation, knowing that we are part of this creation. The more we safeguard God's creation, the more we love to see nature thriving in the hands of God, then we say for sure we are obeying the law of nature, the law of creation. We are taking care of God's creation. And for sure that way, we are obedient to God the Father, who created us out of love. When we take care of others, when we take care of ourselves, and when we take care of the creation around us. We need to reflect more on our obedience to the laws as signs of God's love, as signs of reverence, and as signs of adoration. Adoration is not simply to, to come to a place of worship. It's all our life. It's how we walk. It's how we talk. It's how we relate with others. It's what we are looking for in others. And lastly, it's what our reverence for God entails. It's total adoration to God. God's absolute power is over all things, is over all creation. And we need to live in gratitude. That's what the first reading reminds us, to live in gratitude. I'm looking at our families. God gives us the people to live with. I'm looking at our husbands and our wives. I'm looking at our children. 
I'm looking at the community that supports us. I'm looking at the gardens where we get our food. I'm looking at all the people that give us hope. All this is an invitation to love God more, an invitation to have reverence for God, an invitation to live each day of our lives in adoration. God's people enjoy a special favor. We know very well that Israel, the Israelites were the chosen race and they, they live to be happy about that. And all of us, I'm sure, we live uh, when we feel we are chosen, we are a special race. All of us, I'm sure we pride in our tribes, we pride in our clans, we pride in our communities. Say, I come from Kongiru, you know, you say it with all pride. I come from this place. There is so much joy that comes because we feel we are special before the Lord and we feel we have a special favor, a special grace granted unto us, meritoriously given to us without any effort. And yet, all this should remind us that we need to extend this favor that we have got from the Lord to all. Israel, the chosen country, the chosen race, they are invited to believe and to work, to know, and to testify to the whole world that they are the chosen race, yet invited again to extend that same grace, that same favor unto them, to all the people of God. They are invited also to move out to the Gentiles, to spread the fact that God possesses them. God's people enjoy a special favor and grace. You and I believe and know that we have been chosen in a special way, by a special favor by God. And we feel happy about it. And we don't regret about these moments when we feel high about God's grace. Yet, God challenges us to extend this favor, this grace to all his people. We pray that just like St. Teresa, Benedicta of the Cross, lived to master her career, her vocation, and her call to religious life, that we too may live to master God as creator, redeemer, and sanctifier of all the world. And just like St. Teresa Benedict of the Cross lived to master her cross, that we too will shall live to master our crosses and lead them to the power of the resurrection through Christ, him who makes us live now and forever. And lastly, St. Teresa Benedict of the Cross, we are told as a woman, she lived so much to suffer because she was a woman and she was a doctor in, in the academia and she was also a Jew. Uh, she lived to suffer because of that. The Nazi persecution of the Jews did not leave her the same. Just like she was inspired and she wrote something about the of St. John of the Cross. And she chose the name Teresa Benedicta after her conversion and her interest in religious life. We pray that we too uh, may each day of our lives live again to master our crosses and stick to that that lasts in the face of God.
bless the name of the Lord. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. Be pleased, O Lord, to accept the offerings of your church, for in your mercy you have given them to be offered, and by your power you transform them into the mystery of our salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you laid the foundation of the world and have arranged the changing the changing of times and seasons. You found man in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder to rule in your name over all you have made and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory. The mystery of faith. To proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memory of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Cyprian, and Paul, our apostolic administrator, the whole order of bishops, all the clergy, religious, and entire people you have gained for your own. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection 
and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on each one of our soul, we pray. That with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, most especially St. Charles Wang and companions, St. Benedicta, St. Teresa Benedicta of the Cross, St. Teresa of Avila, St. Andrew Bassett, Blessed Basil Moreau, Venerable Patrick Payton, and all the saints named after each one of us, and all the saints who are pleased with our ages, we may merit to be quiet to eternal life, and may you praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. <laughs> Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed. May the blood and blood of Christ protect us and bring us to life everlasting. Amen.
The bread that I'll give, says the Lord, is my flesh for the life of the world. And let us pray. May the communion of your sacrament that we have consumed save us, O Lord, and confirm us in the light of your truth, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Merciful Father, we humbly beseech your protection, this kind of coronavirus, which has thrown the world into incredible agony and tears. Guide all those who are the front line in the research of its origin, cause and cure so that we may be saved from the storm it is now spreading. Enlighten the medical personnel, the leaders and the religious, so that they may respectfully and faithfully take care of us bodily and spiritually, to professionally take care of the sick and to be kind to them, as we also pray for our leaders and Lord volunteers who are helping to extinguish the fire of this pandemic. Help them to find the right cure, concrete ways of exterminating this courage. We pray for quick recovery for all those who are being either affected or infected. As we come from this challenging ambient, help us to be firm in faith, hope, and love. Give us grace to work for the common good, thus helping each other. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you in his kindness and pour out saving wisdom upon you. Amen. May he nourish you always with the teachings of faith and make you persevere in holy deeds. Amen. May he turn your steps towards himself and show you the path of charity and peace. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you all and remain with you now and forever. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Remain in the peace of Christ. Christ be to God. Oh, the Mass is ended.